This is the follow-up video to the uh, Knives for Big Game video I just recently did. Uh, there's a couple of things I want to talk about, and one of them is uh, knife grinds, which I didn't mention in that video. Um, as far as knife grinds go, there's three, the three most common are the hollow grind, a flat grind, and a convex grind. Uh, example of a hollow grind is this dozier. And Dozier probably makes some of the best hollow grinds out there today. The Randall is another example of a hollow grind. Also, Buck makes some pretty decent hollow grinds. Uh, the flat grind, which I don't have an example of, is a flat plane from the spine to the edge. Just goes flat down, uh, straight down to the edge. The third one would be the convex grind, and uh, I, that's what I do on my knives is a convex grind. Now, my convex grinds, like I mentioned in the convex grinding video, is flat convex combination. About 80, 75 to 80% flat, 20 to 25% convex. I like this grind because it gives me a flatter convex and good geometry with this the geometry of a flat grind and the strength of a convex grind so it's kind of like the best of both worlds with those two grinds as far as edges go on the different grinds um, the most common is probably the the secondary v bevel which is on most of your uh, hollow grinds and flat grinds that are out there. Now, a lot of knife makers will put a convex edge on their flat grinds, but I don't know about too many of the hollow grinds that have a convex uh, micro bevel on them. Now, I've, I do that with my own. The, the knives that I own that have hollow grinds, I do put a uh, convex edge on them, and it can be done. Um, I like the convex edge better than the V-bevel because it's easier to maintain for me with the way I sharpen in the field and also it's a stronger edge than the, uh, the V-bevel is and it seems to stay sharper longer. So that's, that's why I like the, uh, the convex edge better. Um, as far as the type of um, sharpness I like for a hunting knife, I like more of a toothy edge when it comes to cutting uh, flesh and um, you know butchering up deer and skinning and things like that whatever all that goes into game prep and with the toothy edge you can actually feel it's a little rough along the edge it's sharp but you can actually feel the roughness along the edge um, I've used the polished edges before and um, they just don't seem to do as good a job as a toothy edge. Um, the problem I find with them is, is that they slip off of what you're cutting. They uh, they don't grab into the material you're cutting, whether it's skinning or whether it's cutting the meat up or whatever. So that's why I like the toothy edge better. The uh, the steels I like to talk about the different the different steels that I work with and that I like to use hunting knives. All these steels will work and they all do a good job. Um, if someone would ask me in the carbon steels that I work with, A201, D2, they all work and I like all of them for hunting knives. D2 seems to take a toothy edge better than the O1 and the A2 do. You, could, you can get a toothy edge on the A2 and the O1. But for some reason, D2 seems to take it better, and it holds an edge very well. A2 and O1 also hold an edge extremely well, but I don't know what it is about D2. It just seems to work really well in a hunting knife. Uh, and that's usually my top pick when I'm recommending a steel, carbon steel, to someone that's looking for a hunting knife. Uh, in the stainless steels, the CPM steels, that I work with the CPM 154, S35VN, and S90V. Um, 
they're fantastic steels. I don't have a lot of experience with S90V in the field. I have a knife that I had made and hoped to use this past fall, but didn't get the opportunity. Um, the S35 I used on three deer in my UNK model, and just a fantastic steel, held an edge. Um, I didn't really need to touch it up at all. I did with the charade hone steel, just so it was ready for the next deer. It didn't need it, but I, I did it anyway. Uh, just a common practice of mine to touch your edge up after I finish uh, pr uh, processing an animal. Those, those steels are great, and um, if you want to get a good stainless steel, they're the ones I highly, highly recommend. Um, as far as the, the getting back to the grinds, um, when you're picking any of these grinds, they're all going to get the job done. Um, a lot depends on the animal too that you're, you know, you're uh, you're working with. Um, you want to have a fairly thin grind. It doesn't have to necessarily be too thin, uh, but you want to make sure you have a nice thin, sharp edge, especially when you're working with an animal like wild boar. Um, they're like, from what I've heard, I've never. I've never skinned a wild boar, never had the opportunity, I hope to someday, but from what I've heard, they're like skinning sandpaper uh, because of the dirt and grit, and they're just tough animals to, uh, to uh, skin. Uh, so you want a good edge holding steel, a good thin sharp edge, a good toothy edge, and D2 is going to be one of the good choices for steel for a hunting knife. Uh, when you're dealing with elk, moose, deer, things like that, any of the steels that I mentioned are going to work well. The A2, the O1, uh, D2, I mean they're all going to do well. Um, I like the stainless steels more so than the carbon steels for hunting knives because there's, a, there's less maintenance involved as far as uh, worrying about getting them cleaned up right away. Um, you should maintain your, your knife in the field by getting it cleaned as soon as possible. Um, but the stainless just seems to be one of those steels you don't have to uh, worry too much about as much as you do with the other ones. D2 is pretty good, considered a semi-stainless. Um, it's, uh, it's another one that's kind of almost maintenance-free, but it will rust and stain if you don't care for it properly. So just be sure that you Keep your, uh, your blades clean after you finish with the animal. Get them as clean as uh, soon as possible because blood dries very quickly and it's really tough to get off a knife if you leave it on too long. So these are just some of the other things I wanted to talk about that I didn't get opportunity in the last video. And um, the choices out there are, are large. I mean, there's a lot of different knives, companies, makers. Um, if you want a specialized tool, probably the best person to go to is a custom knife maker because they can fix you up with whatever you're looking for. So I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, good luck with your choices when you're picking out a hunting knife.